Hi, I'm Lori. And I'm Kathy. And we are going to do a beautiful cutwork design today. That's right. We're going to use the, the cutwork script monogram. And we've chosen the five inch size today. And we're using the letter L for your monogram. My monogram. So I get to keep <laughs> this, right? That's right, you do. Okay. So we have a five by seven hoop because we're going to do, what size did you say? We're going to do the five inch size. The five inch size. And That's this right. particular letter is five inches tall and it's five inches wide. Okay. okay. They vary. They vary in width depending on the letter. So we've hooped up a layer of dissolve away stabilizer and a layer, a layer of linen. Okay. So we're just going to give you a nice little tutorial and then later on I'll make it into a fun cute project since it's going to have my initial on it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pull in our design. On my machine, I'm on the journey. So I'm going to choose the USB icon. And this is the design that we're working on. So I'm going to select that. And now you see it on my workspace. I'm going to touch my set icon and my embroidery icon. And we're going to be ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and load our 5x7 frame. Mm -hmm. We've actually hooped a layer of linen and a layer of water-soluble stabilizer. And this is just going to be a little sample. Mm -hmm. Later on I might do something with this. We will just have a little bit of... So I'm going to lower my presser foot and touch start. So the first thing that's going to stitch is the... That's right. The first step is going to be an outline and it's going to outline the the L is going to give you the spaces that you're going to cut cut the fabric and remove the fabric from the inside of those spaces. You want to be really careful to keep the hoop uh, hooped project flat either flat on a work surface or as we're doing here flat on the, the bed of the machine. If you, if you were to put the hoop in your lap or place your hand behind it and press on that fabric ever so slightly, it may shift the fabric and shift the design. Then when you return the hoop to the machine, the design may stitch a little off and, and you may think something's wrong with it when in fact the design shifted just a little bit and you didn't even know it. And you're doing a great job trimming very closely. You're going to cut away on the inside. You're going to be very careful when you cut just to cut the fabric and not the stabilizer underneath. Okay. And be careful that you don't cut the stitching. And Lori, if you ever need to, you can grab a straight pin or a needle or even a seam ripper. To, to grab like one little thread in the center of that space if, if you can't grab it with your um, pointed scissors to get that started and then you can slip your scissors in there, um, the tip of your scissors to get it cutting. That's a good tip. I mm -hmm. like that. Okay, I just finished cutting out all the fabric inside those stitch lines. So mm -hmm. what do I get to do next? Well, next the, the machine is going to stitch a zigzag line sort of to tame those little fray ends that you might have. You did a great job trimming um, very closely. So it's, it's going to zigzag and, and give that underlay stitching for the satin stitching later. And it, the machine does all the work. From this point um, forward, you're done and the machine will do the rest of the work for you. So I just get to touch yep. my start and stop button That's after right. each step is finished. That's right. So the next step is our um, our little zigzag. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, we just finished our, our, our zigzag stitching around the outer edge. Yep, and Lori, that just kind of tames all those fray strands of thread. And if you see anything at this point, you might want to trim away. Um, there, there may be one or two, but 
you can either trim at this point mm -hmm. or wait until the very end because the next step the machine is going to um, stitch those crossbars that make the beautiful like little window panes or little holes that that you see and and is a, indicative of the cut work but you can either trim them away now if you see any, or you can wait until until the very end. It looks pretty clean. Mm -hmm. Yep, we did a you good did job. You did a great job. <laughs> a great job. Okay, so I'll go ahead and start my next step. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we just finished this step, and mm -hmm. I'm going to try to say the name. But I've heard these bars were called Richelieu bars. That's right, Richelieu bars. And those are the little cross pieces, and they end up making the little window panes okay. that um, the cut work is known for. It nice. looks really pretty. Yeah. So now we just have one more thing to stitch? We actually have two steps oh, to okay. stitch. Um, this next step is the satin stitching. Oh. It's going to connect those Richelieu bars to the edge okay. of, of the, the design, and it's going to stitch right over the zigzag stitch that, that stitched right before. Okay, so we'll get to stitching that, right? So Kathy, we just finished the satin stitch, so it's next. That's right. The last step, and it's really an optional step, but in, in the case of the L, I feel like it's necessary. It's the bead stitching all the way around the outline of the, of the satin stitch. Mm -hmm. And in the case of the L, it completes the letter. And some letters it may look complete without it, but it, it is a beautiful finishing step. Because it is really pretty, even yep. at this point. Okay, so I'll go ahead and start my last step. Okay, we just finished our L in that beautiful cutwork <laughs> design. And I have to agree with you, Kathy. The little, what did you call the little, the round embroidery design on there? The, the bead stitching. The, the bead stitching. It reminds me of candle wicking. Yeah, that's exactly what it's called. It's very yep. pretty, very pretty. It really completes that design. <laughs> oh, it's just beautiful. I can't wait to do that. Yep. 50 more. <laughs> it's really pretty in all the sizes that we offer. You could you could do a tea towel, you could do pillow shams, euro shams, or you could even do a shower curtain. Ooh, a, a shower curtain. Yeah. I like that idea. We finished our cut work in the embroidery machine, so the only thing we have left now is to take care of getting rid of the stabilizer in the back. So that's the process that we're going to do next. Kathy, since we finished, so now I'm excited we're going to get to really finish it up. What do I need to do next? Lori, next we're going to remove the water-soluble stabilizer. And what I recommend is getting a Q-tip and wetting it and touching it to each one of these little holes. Then the stabilizer will melt away and disappear. So you're not actually having to cut away the stabilizer in each one of these little holes. We get that question a lot. And no, it's not difficult at all. All you're having to do is melt it away with water. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and slip my napkin underneath there and wet my Q-tip and just start dabbing away. Yep. You want to help me? Yeah. And Laura, you don't have to be shy. You really want to saturate that stabilizer so it will dissolve for you and if it doesn't if there's a little stubborn area you can always get tweezers and just um, pull it out okay really if you I might mm -hmm. keep tip once yeah. it starts disappearing it just pops through those little holes I like that it's like magic That's right. <laughs> so what do I do after I get all the little windows cleared. Yeah. Oops, we've, worked on, we've worked on those windows and then what you want to do is just touch around the edge of the design because you want to remove all of the stabilizer Okay. and because this is we're using water soluble stabilizer you just touch it with this wet q-tip but you need to really get it wet and then it will just pull away for you. You may be wondering if you can do this over a sink you, you can, but you really want to remove some of this, uh, most of the stabilizer first because you don't want this gumminess going down your drain. Oh, it's really starting to separate there. That's yeah. really neat. So we're starting just, to get that stabilizer mm -hmm. away from that design. Any stubborn little spots you could use your tweezers. 
And you can wash and dry these designs. Oh, okay. They are sturdy enough. So they're going to look pretty, but they're use they'll be useful too. That's right. Oh, wow. Look, it's really lifting mm -hmm. up. <laughs> if you want to, you could cut around it and then remove the parts that didn't remove with scissors. You can do that those parts with but this is, tip And this is coming away really it's, easy. It's very quick and easy. And you certainly don't want to try to cut each one of those holes no. with scissors. So that's no. <laughs> so you may, when you digitize that, you really took care of that. Mm -hmm. Man, you made it easy the way you designed it. I did. Okay. So it looks like we have most of it. Most of it's off. Mm -hmm. Off of there. Yep. And you could let it lay flat to dry, or you, you could iron it, but you want to make sure that all of it is off before you um, iron it or do anything like that. See, that paper towel came in handy because mm -hmm. we did get it a little wet there. Mm -hmm. I got missed a few little spots right yep. here. And then probably at this point would be a good time to just go ahead and put it in maybe another, like a bowl of water. You, you just kind of sift it a little bit if there's can. anything mm -hmm. left over. Because we've gotten most of it away, Right. we're yeah. not going to have a whole lot of that gumminess. And there may be um, a string or two left from either your stabilizer or um, if you're using uh, linen or Ozenberg or any of the, the fibrous fabrics, um, there's a few little strands right here that we might want to trim. Um, but these, these pieces are very strong, very sturdy. You can wash and dry if you've done this on a, on a towel or a pillow sham or something. Just don't, don't hesitate uh, to put it in the washer or dryer or you can lay it flat to dry. Okay. Well, Kathy, it really turned out pretty. I've pressed it. I've gotten, we've gotten the rest of the, the stabilizer out of there, and I really can't wait to get this into a finished project. I'll probably put some uh, fabric on the sides and maybe a little bottom accent and make a pretty tea towel. Or maybe a pillow. Yeah, it would make a very pretty pillow. Well, thank you all for joining us. Bye for now.